What's up, guys? It's Z Michael in here in 1987. Here to give you guys a review of The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 4, Amid the Ruins. So, this week, this review is going to be a few weeks old, so sorry about that. Um, in case you haven't noticed, you can also watch my playthrough, which is on my channel already. You can check it out. I did all my gameplay on this Pog HDPVR2. Um, so that's how I did my gameplay. We're not gonna talk about how I did my gameplay. We're gonna talk about how this game is. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it is it in between? Let's talk find out. So I'm gonna talk about a little about Telltale's history first. Telltale Games knows how to do a story. They know how to end the finale. But how to but a penny ultimate episode, in other words, is an episode that that is like um heading to the finale. Never always succeeds. I mean Let's be honest, Telltale's last uh, few um, game series, like The Wolf Among Us and the first season of The Walking Dead, suffered um, around every corner. Suffered from the fact that it felt like a filler episode to a lot of people. Um, uh, and Sheep's Clothing suffered because it was too short. It was also hey, what's that right inconsequential. And the one, and the biggest one is, there was no real progression of the plot whatsoever. Now, we're gonna, now a lot of people will be saying, oh, this is another slump in, like, Telltale series. I mean, they had high grade scores, and now they're at the bottom again. Well, for my opinion, no. In my opinion, this episode, I actually like it a lot more than In Sheep's Clothing. And, actually, um, Around Every Corner. You wanna know why? Because it actually does a few things right here. Now, now, let's just talk about what... Hang on. No, never mind. What, um... Sorry about that. I keep so, let's talk about what happened. Let's, now, I must warn you guys that this review will also be spoilers to the last three episodes. So, if you have not played the last three episodes, please play them because they're really good episodes and they're amazing. So, what's this episode about? Well, it takes place right after the, sec uh, the exact second after the events of the last choice you did in the last episode. When you see Sarita getting bitten by a walker, what do you do? My, in my playthrough, if you haven't seen already, I chopped her arm off, and then you all see the outcome of that, which is actually kind of cool. Now, like you said, it's inconsequential. There's no real consequences. Bullshit. There's actual consequences in actually what you did in the last episode. So if you stab the walker in the head, or if you cut her arm off, there's two different like scenarios of what happens, but it always ends the same way. I understand people's complaints about that, but this is like, I mean, the ending. I understand people say, oh, it's bland. It doesn't have real consequences. To be honest, it does really, um, because if there was a different con like a different scenario, then it wouldn't be in the same way. Then there would be no season episode five. Um, I believe it's called No Going Back. But in my opinion, the this episode is consequential. There are some consequences here and there, but they're little ones. They're little detailed ones. They don't really see coming. So what does this episode do? It sets up um, the fact that Rebecca's baby. Is coming in this episode. We know it's gonna be coming in this episode. It's gonna come out. There's gonna be live streaming. There's gonna be trouble. So, and we have to find a place for her to rest and relax and the baby to be safe. That's what the really story is about this one. But it also deals with the fact that Kenny, the man that was in the first season and also comes back to this season, is suffering. Now, because the fact that he almost got beaten to death and he kills Carver, which is the main villain, which is no villain in this episode, really. But he's also suffering with the fact that he lost someone he cares about. Again, and you basically get to see his um, reactions and the way how I played. Because in my playthrough, he wasn't really that exactly nice to Clementine. And Clementine is always growing as a character. And it's always really just like, really well done here. Now, I don't talk too much about the gameplay at all, really. Gameplay is the same as always. You move with the left analog stick, you look around with the right analog stick, moving the cursor around, trying to find out objects, touch objects, look at uh, examine details, little things like that. You don't need to worry about gameplay because it's always the same. That's a good thing. Now, I really do like that about the game that it isn't really diverse. It's not like the first season where you go to first person view and start shooting zombies in the head or anything like that. And I'm fine with that. Um, but I have no glasses on. I just forgot about that. But the, a lot of people are really saying that the deaths in this episode are weak, which they aren't actually. They're not really weak at all. They actually have some impact for me as. And I can't really spoil what happens in this episode, but you already played it already. But let's just say things don't always go well for some members. And a lot of people say the weeks are deaf. They're not. 
in my opinion, they actually had some impact because I was actually trying to save this person, but they ended up dying. And it's intensifying at moments. And plus, characters I tried to save in the last few episodes, they end up biting the bullet in this episode. And it's emotional, in my opinion. A lot of people say, oh, they're just done because they don't, they, the developers don't know how to put them in this finale. Bullshit. It's a way to really show that sometimes in this world, you can't save everyone. That, and sometimes in this world, someone that you can't really, like I said, can't save everyone, but someone, somebody dies. Someone has to die, really. That's how The Walking Dead is. And that's always, and in Clementine's perspective, you have to try to save that person. But really, this question for me, and personally, was, can this person, can Clementine, who's always against, like, the world's way, this new world's way of forget the people who are stuck, forget the person that's injured, forget them. Can she really go against that, or is she going to be swallowed in that um, idea as well? It's all up to you, really. But for me, I try to stay away from that, oh, just leave her, or leave him, or don't let them drag you down. I didn't really go for that pattern. I always try to help someone. I always try to try to really try to be on survival of the fittest at times. But for me, it was kind of diverse at times. I also really like that the story and progression in this episode is actually a lot more better and then around every corner in the easy clothing. It's actually a lot better. It actually moves actually a lot more straight down the line, except of in the Latin and she's clothing, it was stuck in a circle and in around every corner. You weren't really going in a circle, you were going in like a square position. You're doing that over and over again. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. So what is the problem with this episode? It's not really having any problems. I mean, I like the new characters they show from the last episode, like Mike, who's, um, he doesn't really, you don't really see too much about him, but we kind of see that he is a guy. He's just a character who's been suffering a little bit, but we don't know too much about Mike. I wish we actually learned a bit more about him, but we do learn a lot more about the new character, Jane, who is actually trying to take Clemson from the her wing as kind of like teaching him new moves, how to kill walkers by kicking them in the knee and then make it stabbing them in the back of the head, which is kind of cool. And uh, she also gives Clementine a screwdriver, and she's trying to influence Clementine on this thing of don't stick with the group because it is going to drag you down and kill them. And she's kind of like this like thing in your head, this like thing that it's like a thorn in your side that will never leave you alone. It's always, she's always telling you, don't let them pull you down with them. And I like that. But I feel like at times it was a little bit too forced upon me. Especially in the choice that takes place like 30 or 40 minutes into the episode. Where I feel like it was a bit forced. But I was okay with it. Because I kept on progressing on. And then she changes a little bit, Jane. But she doesn't really change too much. And she's still herself. And she likes to be a loner. She doesn't like being in groups. Because she always sees that groups have always died. And that she always suffered in the same way. I can't really say about what is her art and her past. But it was satisfying for me, at all points. It always was satisfying. It didn't really fall apart, in my opinion. So I don't see the viewers saying, oh, the episodes, characters are not memorable. They don't really have that punch to them. And actually, a lot of reviewers are actually praising this episode, giving it 9.5s, 9s, and 9s, and 9.5s, which I'm really surprised at. Because this last, um, Wolf Among Us is episode 4, they got 6, 6, 6, 5, oh, God. Six five five six six seven five five seven or six on like that or maybe an eight the tops, but I'm not seeing that this review episode is actually doing a lot more better with the critics. So that's a good thing. Except IGN and some other reviewers were giving it like. So overall, in my opinion, I think that the game is actually a lot more better, and it does end on that great cliffhanger episode. No, that other um, season is done. Like episode one on the corners, cliffhanger was amazing. In Sheets Clothing's cliffhanger was amazing as well. And this house actually has a cliffhanger too. And it's amazing. And a lot of people say there's no real consequences. I mean, yes, with the ending and the fact that the ending has like a snow sequence. Um, but I'm okay with that because it has to end the same way. You can't... It's always going to be bottlenecking. In other words, a bottleneck is... If a game tries to... If you try to change or change story, you're not going to change the actual layout. It has to go the same way. It's going to change how people think of you throughout the story, in other words. And it's, I really thought that was kind of cool in the game, how they actually did that. And I don't really see people complaining that much about it. They shouldn't complain about that much about it. 
okay? Now, when it comes to technical hiccups, if you saw my gameplay, you know there was technical hiccups. There was, like, parts when the game would freeze for a few seconds, and it was, like, a sound keeper walking around, wah, 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 doing that over and over. Then the freeze stopped and all that. So little technical hiccups are still in there. They can trim them out for the last episode of the season, and it could be perfect. Probably not. So, overall, in my opinion, The Walking Dead, Episode 4, and Mid Jones is not a bad game at all. So reviewers out there saying it's a bad game, stop it. Just stop it, please. Don't do that, okay? Overall, in my opinion, it's a great game. It's actually a lot better than I expected. For, like, this episode, and the way they've done it, it's not, it's outstanding. And, of course, I can't wait for the finale. No Going Back, it's called. I don't know if it's, I, I think it's, it's called No Going Back. I'm just going to say right now. I'm calling it No Going Back. So, final verdict of this game is an overall score of an 8 out of 10. A solid 8. Maybe an 8.5. No, I'm just going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Straight. I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. Based on the fact that it's actually really, really good. It's a really good episode. It focuses on story-driven characters and emotional moments and drama a lot more than the other episodes. So that's a good thing. And there's also that good amount of action. There's actually some cool sequences of killing walkers here and there. So that's kind of cool. Um, so overall, when Tale told me this is the final episode, all those re reviews will be like, Okay, I can accept episode 4. And they'll be happy with the ending that they want. So that's good for them. So please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And my name on Facebook is Michael Martinez. My name on Twitter is the Michael Lindsay and Seven. We meet all the time. You can come. You can contact me there by comments, about reviews. Also tell me what you think about this episode. Do you think it was another filler episode? Do you think it was another garbage, or do you think it was actually a solid episode, or do you think it was better than the others? It's all up to you. Comment down there. Let me know what you think. Also. Please sure you really press that like button. I really don't know what it does, but someone tells me if you do, like, gold coins or flat the air or something like that, I don't know. Just do it for me, please. Thanks. And actually watch this video, please. I really want you guys to watch my videos. It really would help me out, so thank you. Um, bye, guys. I'll also be doing reviews of films like Hercules, Purge Anarchy, um, Planet of the Apes Dawn, and um, I'll try, I'll try my best to do a review of Transformers Age of Extinction, even though it's like two months old. I'm still going to try to do a super, super, super late review of it. Just hope you guys actually accept it. Please? For me? For me? Okay, good. So I'm going to go, guys. Go. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go, guys. Bye-bye. See you next episode. Bye.